so first of all, you got to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. My name is Adil Mohammed. I was originally born in Karachi, Pakistan, and my dad was already originally he, he was already in the states looking for work, and he thought to bring our family over because he found out that I was actually kicked out from school because of the fact that I wasn't learning. And the reason I was learning is because I'm a very curious individual. Even the school in, in the Christian school told me that I would not be able to speak a word of English. I am uncoachable. I am unteachable. And so they ultimately expelled me from school. And I just wasn't getting my curiosity met in any way, shape, or form. I would always ask why. So my dad's all right. There's no reason to stay here for any point at all. I'm already in the States. Let's bring him here. So we moved to Orlando, Florida. And once again, I'm six years old. I don't know the country at all. I don't speak a word of English. I don't understand the culture. I don't understand anything, but you know, we start from scratch. We, I get here and assimilate very, very quickly because you have to survive. It's all about survival at that moment of instance. So developing a support system. So finding right. friends. So, so now when you say surviving, right? So like, where, what, what does that mean? Where did you grow up at? So you say you moved, you migrated, right? You're in Orlando. Was it like, man, you in the, in the Golden Palace in Orlando? Like, what, like, what, like, what was that like? We, we immigrated, immigrant, uh, us coming in our background, we didn't have much to come with. So my, uh, our household is a single family household. My father is the only one who's bringing in any income. My mom is a stay at home mom. So we, we don't have a degree back, uh, backgrounds. My doc, my father has particularly worked in blue collar work his whole life here. So once we immigrated, we immigrated to a community in Orlando, Florida that was fairly impoverished. So it'd be, you know, violence around drug trafficking around. These would be the general things I would kind of grow up with. But, you know, you, you generally don't know any of this is good or bad growing up as kids. You just you're a kid. You want to just have a good time with everybody else. So these were the moments I would see growing up. And my circumstance was slightly different because I came in 2000 post 9-11 for me was substantially difficult because I was looked at as an extreme outsider because I have a background with my Islamic background, my name in and of itself is ethnic. My appearance itself is differentiating from everything. I'm extremely ethnic. So all of these characteristics, I was always an outsider. I never really belonged. I had difficulty finding friends, finding my support systems, but I always had that innate desire. Like, I, I know I can find it. You know, just I, I have to keep trying. I will find it. I hustled with that mentality. I always saw my parents because my dad always grew up. He had three jobs at a time. We can't afford living. And so like, our community, if I give you an idea per capita, it would be the income around $12,000, $20,000 per capita with a family household, like four, four kids. Uh, somewhere in that average range, we weren't living a great lifestyle, but I didn't know what poverty was because everybody else was impoverished growing up around me. Uh, so that was a similar narrative growing up, but I, I, I adapted very quickly because I had to. It was, it was that you have to survive mentality. So seeing my dad hustle with multiple jobs at a time, I did that in school. So I learned English very, very quickly. The areas that I struggled with, mathematics or writing, I would stay longer hours in tutoring. I may go through detention substantial amount of time because I'm still struggling. I still don't understand. I'm causing, uh, you know, riots in the class, whatever the case might be. But it's that constant desire to figure out where do I fit in this place and what's for me. So I did that in elementary school, did that in middle school. Yeah, so I got all the way up into high school. My, my GPA wasn't fantastic in any way, shape or form because I didn't have the resources. I didn't know what the SAT was. I didn't know what the ACT was. I kind of, you know, got all the resources, all the pieces here and there, and I couldn't, have, our family could not afford me going to a university, four-year university, so I got a part-time job, I saved up for community college, and there was the stigma around community colleges, first and foremost, you know, not only in other communities, but me coming to the States, you have to go to a four-year university, because my parents don't know any better, they haven't been to a university themselves, so I didn't take that general route. Uh, I didn't know about any of that in the first place. So I went to community college. I saved enough money, you know, my first two years. I got a scholarship. I was happy and grateful enough for that privilege. I got a scholarship and I paid for my first two years. The next two years weren't, uh, you know, weren't that exciting because I could not pay for that. I got to have to take out loans. I went to the University of Florida. Way more expensive to kind of go through, but it's still a public university. I could, it's still a little easier to play with. And after graduating from the University of Florida, I, I didn't know what my path would be. My whole goal in life was because all I saw in my community was my friends getting incarcerated, immigrants getting deported, and my natural thought process was like, I, I need to be an advocate. 
I need to protect my community. So looking at from where I came from and what we lacked in the community was advocates and leaders. My thought was, okay, let me see what law school is about. I like to have a conversation. I like to find solutions. I find problems and I'll find solutions with whatever those problems are. Law school makes that right path. Took that path uh, in law school. I once again struggled. I, this is a brand new language for me. I've never been in this upper graduate degree pathway. I don't have any support systems. No one has done any of this in my family. And once again, it, it's a grind. You have to grind there. And if you haven't been in the space, you absolutely have to grind. So I would get up at five, six in the morning, stay up at 12 at night, and we would repeat. I'd open the, I, I would be one of the earliest people at the library and I'd be the last people to close the library. This was a constant thing. And I graduated and got by, but I didn't realize what other things were affecting me. I realized I had depression, I had anxiety, and that would affect my test taking in school. I didn't know these were things because I thought everyone is struggling with this. Why do we talk about this? What's the need? Until I found out people in my cohort from lower income and you know marginalized backgrounds, they were struggling with the same thing. So we built a support system realized, all right, we can share these intricacies, we can share our experiences, and we can build the support system. And then I sought the support that I needed. So it was always this problem solving, even internally, I am struggling with this, but let's find the solution. This is this can't always be my problem for the rest of my life. We have to find a solution. And so for the past four years, I've been in the legal field. I graduated from law school in 2020. I sat for the bar come uh, three times, mind you. So once again, coming through that experience again, I uh, the pandemic hit in July uh, 2020. That was postponed until October. I was fighting with the state of California to get my accommodations, and I could not get it. And it was always this struggle of why can't I get what I need to be in a position to support my family, support my community, but I, I couldn't get that uh, this whole time period. Fast forward this last bar for the third bar that I took come July of this year, eventually got partial amount, took the bar, and then I kind of realized, all right, even if I do pass, I get my license, but what, what's the purpose now? Where, where am I sitting right now? Can I actually help my community? Can I help my family? First and foremost comes my family. So even if I get my license, economically speaking, I can't support them because I'll be working in the last four years. I've been working in public defense and immigration nonprofit work. Money's not coming in. So regardless, I'm going to be struggling. Yeah, I'm helping out a lot of great people, but I'm struggling. So at the end, like I, I can't really help out anybody. And I had to have that difficult conversation with my parents, had to have a difficult conversation with my friends. And we had that dialogue. I, I need to transition. What, what are the skills right now that I have? What is my natural personality? I find problems, I can solve them, and I can make things better for other people. Sales made that natural sense, and particularly sales and tech. And that's all generally what they kind of, they that field does. And once again, this is me coming from a very professional background and now transition into another background. It was a difficult transition because you have to leave substantial amount of years behind, substantial amount of work that you dedicated to one particular area. And then say, all right, I have to kind of navigate once again because this isn't working. It has to be honest. And I made that honest, difficult decision. And I had to be honest with my parents about it too because they couldn't understand what was happening right now because you're an immigrant. We sacrificed all this and now you're moving again. You're doing this something again. Like you can't, you can't stay consistent. Uh, but you know, I had to be honest with myself. And then at the end of the day, once I'm honest with myself, I can be honest with other people, my parents. And I say, all right, I, I know right now might be a short term, but sustainably for the long term, this will be the most effective route. So kind of like a, a little whirlwind. And this is kind of where I'm at in my current route in the sales area. Yeah, man. Wow. Dude, I can only imagine. You know, I, I've been there before too. Uh, parents are just like, you can't keep a job? Like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. like, uh -huh. 10 years, now you just going to change your mind? Uh, I mean, I completely get that. How'd you end up finding a rework, by the way? Like, how, how'd you end up finding a rework? So I was connected with Cassidy Churchill, who's at Andreessen Horowitz. Yeah. She absolutely raved about you, raved about rework and how effective that program is. And not only with the capability of providing us, you know, a great network, let's take you through interview skills, have a basic conversation, see where you're at. Or if you don't need those and you need a little bit more help, let's guide you, let's get you into a cohort. So I, I ultimately wanted to be in a cohort. So I reached out to everybody else. I, you know, I reached out to you, but I think I being me, my circumstance was a little different because I have a professional background. It made things a little easier for me to kind of navigate. And I just said, all right, I have two months right now. I'm going to keep pushing applications. Something's got to stick. I'm going to keep trying until it does, uh, until it does. And it did. 
So I the I got help out helped out by Ben Benjamin and uh, he connected me with another company called Gravy, and we eventually got through the whole process of uh, interviewing. I got to the last round and. I eventually, with all the other interviews that I lined up and the offers that I received, I kind of negotiated my way to get another offer at another company. And had it not been for WeWork with getting the, you know, the network in for me, had it not been for the connection and been working on the background, I would not have been in the position right now to get a job in sales already in a short time period. Uh, so, you know, shout, shout out to WeWork. That's all it really is at the end of the day. Yeah, let's go, man. Love <laughs> you, love you. Cool, cool beans, cool beans. And so now you got to... Um... Man, good content, right? This is how we land this plane, right? So, you know, our models get this work, right? We're just like, man, it's going to be, right. work is required, right? And at the end of every, all these interviews, everybody gives me like a one line or two liner that basically just like, it's a message to somebody that's in your shoes, right? And it's like, kind of like the keep going message, but whatever you say, end it with get this work. My little sentence was just blow up Shelton's phone until he answers and get this work. <laughs> I love it, man. I'll take it, dude. That's going to be dope. Okay. <laughs> it worked for me. So, I mean, it's going to work for somebody else. That's all it is. It did, dude. It did. 100% did, man. You just, like, Come on, man. I need this job. I need this job. Need that's this it. Job. That's it. That's it. <laughs> cool, bro. Appreciate it.